Hi everyone, welcome back to Quarantine Kitchen. I hope you're all doing okay today, maybe even good. As you can see, we're having another gloomy day here in Bristol. It's been off and on raining all day, which means it's the perfect time for me to finally make this requested recipe. Sorry to keep you waiting, Kirsten. We are going to be baking digestive biscuits today and they're really tasty. I'm super excited to have them back in my kitchen. This one shouldn't take too long, let's get started. Okay, so this is everything you're going to need for this recipe. Flour, sugar, one egg, some butter, baking soda, oats, easy peasy. Um, whole wheat flour is recommended. I don't have it. It's going to be fine. I've actually made these before. Just like the tortillas, they are so much tastier when you make them yourself. It's going to be really difficult for you to go back to store-bought after you try this recipe out. All right, so we've got our oven preheating at 190. In here we've got all of our dry ingredients. It's going to be one cup of oats, one cup of flour, half a cup of sugar. I always use less because um, really a little goes a long way, but I put in about a third, maybe almost a half a cup of sugar this time. Half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking soda, or if you are here in the UK, bicarbonate of soda. We're just going to mix all these dry ingredients a little bit, and then we're going to add butter. We'll be using about three quarters of a cup of butter. Um, my recipe that I'm working with is in grams. 100 grams is one American cup. That's the way this is going to work for me today. Again, as always, um, ratios are what's key when you're baking. Here is all of our butter. This might take a little while. Again, you just got to be patient with these things. I'm actually um, going to switch to using a fork here. This is a bit easier using a fork anyway. Feeling punchy, so we're going to add a little cinnamon. So this is pretty much the texture that you want. The butter is pretty well incorporated here. If you had a food processor, this would be a great situation to use it in. Okay, there's the egg. And now we are going to use our hands, actually, to make this into a more consolidated dough. I just want to make sure the crumbly bits get kind of incorporated. As always, that's the key. So instead of um, flouring our work surface here, we're just going to be using oats. Never can have too many oats in these digestives. Next step is going to pretty much be to flatten these down, just like we did with the other biscuits. Again, not really bothering with a rolling pin because it's just not really how I fly, but you are welcome to use one. Go ahead and just roll them oats. Roll them oats. Ah. Roll them oats. Oh. So, yep, again, don't really need a fancy cookie cutter for this. All you need is a cup. might even be slightly on the thick side, but not feeling too concerned about that today. The important thing is that it's going to fit in your mug for optimal dipping. Definitely use something with a smaller circumference than your favorite tea mug has. It's a crucial element of these biscuits here. I'm feeling like these guys are actually a little too fat, so I might flatten them out a bit more. This is more like the size I'm wanting here. They're not really gonna rise. The baking soda is more actually for flavor. So yeah, feel free to kind of make them bigger, smaller. This one's falling apart on me a little bit. I might just kind of reform it, so I might show you more of how they look. Just needs a little more support. Okay, so I'm just gonna throw this first batch in the oven right now. 636. Be ready in about 15 minutes. For 
for what it's worth, by the way, the reason I'm struggling more with this batch than I was last time I made these is I think because I've just had the oven on longer, I sort of got distracted while they were hanging out over here. And my surface that I'm working with is right next to my oven, so the butter has been melting, which makes these proto biscuits kind of behave differently. I encourage you maybe to use a surface farther from your oven. Just don't abandon, don't neglect your poor little cookies for too long. But um, they should still be hopefully completely fine, but that's what we're going to blame it on. If they do come out um, kind of ugly or melting into each other. Just gonna go ahead and make the um, second sheet of them while the first one's baking. These guys are pretty shelf stable and I don't really want to leave my dough lying around. Um, and I have enough for two sheets. So yeah, they also go pretty fast, frankly. For those of you in the audience who are like, I'm not British, what is a digestive biscuit? That sounds gross. Um, they're basically cookies just designed for dunking in your tea. And a lot of them are chocolate coated and that would be also pretty easy to do with this recipe however I'm not really feeling like doing that with mine I didn't feel the need to last time either um, we kind of have enough chocolate in our lives in this household right now but um, very easy to do that if you've ever melted chocolate double boiler system you could probably even use your microwave and just kind of dip the cookies in that um, so there's definitely wiggle room and creativity. Um, I also forgot in my concern over the folia partiness of these, the recipe I'm kind of jumping off of, which I will link um, right below this video, encourages you to um, create little designs with your fork on the biscuits before you put them in the oven. So that is an option that's open to you if you wanted to write a cute message to your loved one on biscuits, for example or just um, make little stars on them. Whatever strikes your fancy. As always, this is an art as well as a science. Second batch about to go in. You can see they're not perfectly um, formed. Lucky for us, this is Quarantine Kitchen, not Great British Bake Off, so Paula Hollywood is not here to judge um, the consistency of our cookies. All that really matters is that they taste good. So it's been about 20 minutes for the bottom guys, but I actually think our top guys are done first. So you can see um, they're kind of golden brown. So what I'm going to do is swap them. Leave these ones in for another minute or two. Keep an eye on the others. Keep an eye on the others. Keep an eye on the others. Okay, so as we can see, um, it's been another five minutes and I abandoned these guys a little too long. Again, I am a really bad biscuit mother today. Um, only a slight screw up and uh, we can't beat ourselves up over things like this. Your cookies should probably aim to look a little more like these guys. Maybe even this guy. That would be pretty ideal. Um, Going for our little taste test here. Take a look at the cookie. It's kind of crumbling the perfect amount, so that's promising. Audible crunch. Got like a back flavor of oatmeal coming through, just like you want from a good hobnob or some kind of digestive. Yeah, in spite of flawed creation, um, I would rate these cookies a success. Another thing for the rest of you Americans in this audience, um, these cookies have a quality which um, in England we call Moorishness, and that's when you just keep wanting more and more. Pretty self-explanatory. So, I think these digestives pass the Moorishness test. Um, they're definitely going to pass the tea dunking test, and we will um, try and remember to shoot that later or tomorrow when we're actually consuming them with some tea. But um, I think you guys can take it from here. I'm confident in you. Don't repeat my mistakes. Actually, 
keep a slightly better eye on your cookies than I did. But also don't um, feel bad, beat yourself up, or um, get bummed out if you screw up. It's just part of cooking, part of learning, and part of life. Alex thinks they're good too. <laughs> and he's definitely gonna cut this out of the final cut.